Hi, I'm Marcy, and I'm looking forward to working with you today. We'll be together for about 15 minutes. Today's video is going to focus on helping leaders establish a team culture. This video will get you thinking about how to create a bigger picture that everyone in your team is aligned to. It's going to focus on enabling team members from all levels to feel that they have belonging and significance in your team. This leads to better results and bigger impact. Once we've finished our session today, you'll know how to make sure that everyone in your team participates. You'll know how to listen without interrupting. And you'll understand that team alignment comes from everyone buying into a vision. And it's this that creates a good team culture. So what is a team culture? By its most basic definition, a team culture is made up of the values, beliefs, attitudes and behaviours shared by a team. It's how people work together towards a common goal and how they treat each other. When it's working well, a team culture is supportive and collaborative and also really exciting. You know, there's growth and learning to be found. And when we're working in this kind of team culture, we have a spring in our step. We feel excited by our work. Uh, for leaders in this environment, the organisation then has growth and impact and profit and relevance. It's a win-win for all involved. When it's not working so well, you will find despondency, a lack of motivation, reduced impact and a really high level of office politics. Every person is out for themselves. You're constantly watching your back. So now we're going to jump straight into activity one. And that's going to be um, to think about a time when you've worked in a really, really great team culture and a time when you haven't. So everybody grab a pen, a paper, have a document on your um, computer open. And I just want you to start by pausing for one minute and think of a time when you have worked in a great culture. What was it that made it great for you? And how did you feel? So just jot some key words down on a piece of paper. Great, welcome back. Now I want you to do the same thing, but I want you to do it for a time when it's been an unpleasant or difficult culture. Please take another minute to jot down some keywords on a piece of paper. Okay, welcome back. So creating a good and constructive team culture is never an accident. It requires thought and planning and engagement. And if you're at the top of an organisation, that means it has to start with you. There are a few things that every organisation will have in place. A vision, a mission and a strategic plan. With these three things, it becomes possible to hire people who are able to do the best job to meet your goals. However, often organisations haven't done a values piece. If you know what the values system of your organisation is, then you will be able to hire the right people to create the positive environment that will drive your organisation forward. And that brings us on to activity two, which is finding your organisational values. Now, this is really going to be a taster of how you can think about finding your organisational values because we're going to condense a half day workshop into four minutes. OK, so what I want you to do 
is to close your eyes. Imagine yourself standing on top of a mountain, snowy or grassy, whatever works for you. Just picture yourself all alone, head raised up to the sky, arms open to the elements. Up here, you are powerful. You can feel the energy all around you. Now, I want you to bring in your organisation's vision. What organisation are you leading? It might be a fintech or a startup or a holistic practice. You might be leading a team in a bank. Whatever it is, know that you are the leader of that at the top of your mountain. Now think for a moment. You need to bring some other people up here with you, up the mountain, people who you know will support you. In your mind, think about the following questions. What kind of people do you want up here with you? What are their main characteristics? What do you like about them? What's possible when all these people are up there with you? And who don't you want up there with you? Okay, now open your eyes and just take two minutes to write down all of those key words that came up for you. The questions are on the screen in front of you, so you can have those to refer to. Welcome back. Okay. So now you have a list in front of you, and this is the starting point. These are the values that are fundamental to your organization. So there might be words on there like drive, ambition, kindness, focus, um, hardworking or work ethic, okay? It could be a whole number of things. And without these people, who embody these values working for you, it's going to be really hard to create the kind of culture that you want and need. Take a quick look at the kind of people you didn't want up there. These are the values that won't serve your organisation. And it will be different for every, every different person in every organisation. So when you're hiring people, ask questions that will uncover these values to reveal whether someone is a good fit for your organization or not. So moving on, on our whistle stop tour of building a positive team culture, the next question we're going to answer is, how do we improve on what's already there? Because you may not be starting a big recruitment drive or, or a restructure. And one of the ways we can improve on what's already there is through team meetings. And I'm going to introduce you to something called a thinking round. And it was conceptualized by a woman called Nancy Klein. She's the author of the acclaimed Time to Think. Over the past 15 years, Nancy Klein has identified 10 behaviors that form a system called a thinking environment. It's a model of human interaction, really, that dramatically improves the way people think and thus the way that they work and interact with each other. And one of the fundamental premises that sits underneath this system is that we must prize each other's minds above all else. When we can do that, meetings become more productive, business problems are solved, Strategies become bolder, relationships become stronger, and lovely time becomes more available. We all need some of that. So the thinking round is a simple but really effective tool. And for our next activity, 
I'm going to explain to you how to use it and then I'd love you to go away and try it next time you have a meeting. Okay, so welcome to activity three. Regardless of power differentials and hierarchical placement, everyone's thinking matters because getting everybody's best thinking produces best results. So when you next need to discuss an idea or have a team meeting or even solve a problem, I'd really like you to try a thinking round. The best way to get the thinking, the best thinking from everyone is to populate a meeting with systematic, uninterrupted rounds. So rounds increase the generative nature of the group's thinking and rounds also usually produce superior ideas in less time. One of the fundamental principles is that everyone's voice counts no matter their position in the organisation. When we really listen to everyone, then conflict can clear. People bounce ideas off that they wouldn't usually hear and great things can happen. So here are the rules, really simple. Number one, everyone from different levels of your organisation is involved. Number two, everyone takes a turn to speak for a set amount of time, so perhaps two minutes is a really good starting point. Number three, no one can interrupt when the speaker is speaking, nor can they speak until it's either their turn in the round or the whole round has finished. And number four, the chair of the meeting has to ask a question for people to answer or discuss. Now a round is simple enough is a simple enough concept, but it does require these four actions from the from the chairperson and there does need to be a chairperson. So if that's you, the first thing you need to do is decide what that question is that people will be addressing in the round. Number two, determine the direction of the round. Is it going to go round the circle clockwise or anti-clockwise? Number three, ask for a volunteer to begin the round. And number four, remind people that no one speaks again until the round is completed. So, how was that? By using the three activities we have learned today, understanding good culture, finding our values, and learning about thinking rounds, you have some of the basic premises of establishing a positive, healthy, and robust team culture that will increase your organizational impact. How do you think you might take these activities into your workplace? That's it for today. Take good care and I will see you in the next video.